Amsterdam. And all Holland gaily celebrates a great week in Netherlands history, the golden jubilee of Queen Wilhelmina, and following her abdication, the inauguration of her daughter, Juliana. Flags, bunting, and happy crowds give Amsterdam a jubilant look. At night, the city is brilliantly illuminated. For seven days and nights, the bright lights and the colors lift, if only momentarily, the gloom that hangs over Europe. After the tragic years of foreign occupation, the Dutch, so often mistakenly regarded as a phlegmatic people, are making the most of this rare festive occasion. A great reception greets the Queen as she arrives at the Royal Palace for the last week of her reign. Her jubilee coincides with her birthday, for Wilhelmina was a young girl of 18 when she was crowned a Queen. Her youth and the fact that she was a woman never prevented her from displaying the spirit of a King. Now, as in failing health she retires, the people's affection for her and her family has never been greater. Princess Marika, the youngest of her four grandchildren, joins in the crowd's tribute to a grand lady. Wilhelmina retires, happy in the knowledge that her rule has enhanced the good name of the Dutch people throughout the world. The cable car of Val d'Isere is turned into a royal carriage as it takes Queen Juliana of the Netherlands, her husband and the two young princesses to a skiing hut high in the French Maritime Alps. Amid the snow-covered scenery of this enchanting holiday spot, royal duties are left far behind and Holland's first family are captivated, like others before them, by the king of winter sports. Prince Bernhard, only recently returned from an extensive tour of the Dutch colonial empire, seems equally at home on the slopes of Val d'Isere. Almost as proficient is the heiress apparent, Princess Beatrix. Not so assured as her husband, the Queen Juliana, only a recent ski convert, finds it a tricky proposition. A little nervous at first, she became a good pupil. At Sistak Palace, the Dutch royal residence, after the official announcement of Princess Marguerite's engagement. Her fiancé is Peter van Follenhoven, and the romance is completely approved of by Queen Juliana. For two years, the young people have known each other. The announcement was made as soon as the heiress to the throne, Marguerite's sister Beatrix, returned from her visit to the West Indies. The busts of the four princesses were their gift to the Queen and Prince Bernhardt on their silver wedding. Invited to the palace now were Dutch press photographers who make up quite a lot of manpower. Mr. Van Vollenhoven limps because of a broken ankle, a recent skiing accident. He is a law student. He will be the first commoner in Dutch history to marry into the royal house. The good wishes of the nation go with the happy young people. In the Tyrrhenian Sea, north of Rome, Queen Juliana and Prince Bernhardt have been staying at the villa they built six years ago. Princess Irene and Princess Beatrix, with their husbands, were with them. It would be hard to imagine a greater contrast to Holland. The Dutch, like ourselves, seek the sun and a warm sea when holiday time comes round. Prince Klaus is Princess Beatrix's husband. Pieter van Vollenhoven is the fiancé of Princess Marguerite. Princess Irene is married to Prince Charles of Bourbon Palmer. The royal party were at last free to relax in the sunshine, and what a delightful place they chose for their Italian holiday. 
Plus, husband of Crown Princess Beatrix, came in for special cheers at Sustak Palace on Queen Juliana's birthday. Only two days before this event, his own son was born, the first male heir in the House of Orange Nassau for a century. Here and throughout the Netherlands, there was great rejoicing. No one was too young to congratulate the royal family on the joyful event. In the town hall of Utrecht next day, the baby's birth was registered by his proud father. We have the following name given. Willem Alexander, Klaus George Ferdinand. And the new prince will be called? And we name him Alexander. All done legally and formally, as if for an ordinary baby. There was one difference. On behalf of the city fathers, the Lord Mayor presented Prince Klaus with a silver rattle for his son. His Royal Highness said it was a bit on the heavy side for a three-day-old, but would be much appreciated a little later on. <laughs> Over to Utrecht University Hospital and a glimpse of His Majesty the baby himself. By law, Prince Alexander had to be shown to the two official witnesses. future king of the Netherlands, it was all rather a nuisance. He wanted to be back in his warm cot, and the baby doesn't have to be royal to let everyone within earshot know when it's displeased. Holland has a male heir at last. Prince Klaus finds himself a very popular man. Birthday greetings for Queen Juliana. At her palace at Sustein, she celebrated her 60th birthday in the traditional way, with her family around her and her subjects calling to wish her well. But though this was the Queen's big day, Prince Willem Alexander felt he ought to spread a little more goodwill around. Then, when a lamb was presented to the Queen, the two-year-old prince immediately stepped forward to take charge. As every little boy knows, to stand still is impossible, and they will put steps in the most awkward places. No tears, however, it wouldn't do for a prince to cry in public. While the festivities went on, the young son of Princess Beatrix and Prince Klaus discovered a new game with a willing partner. So Prince Willem Alexander found a personal way in which to enjoy an official engagement. But for his grandmother, the show of affection from her people was one which, she said, made an unforgettable impression.